our young people and we chickadees, we didn't sing our song. We left them because we have been so conservative. And the last thing we wanted anyone to think is that we were old fashioned. We weren't with it. We weren't up to date. When we tried to say anything, I had a radio show at that time. And I remember the movie, The Graduate came out. And I went on the air, I was on KCCB and in Independence, a fantasy Christian voice. And it wasn't a religious show, it was just the only place that would let me have a radio show. But I did a whole segment on the evil of the concept of the graduate. A young man is in love with a woman, has a affair with his girlfriend's mother. And I said, this is the beginning of the end. Coincidentally, at the same time, a movie called Blackbird Orange came out. I don't want to get into a history of Hollywood, but y'all know I worked at MGM and I was in Hollywood for lots of years. And I can tell you that um, up until that time, the studios ran the world. While we had people at heads of studios, Jack Warner, Louis B. Mayer, Warner Brothers, MGM almost, the men were vicious. They were heartless, they were mean. You've read stories about Hollywood moguls and how mean they were back in those days. But you know what they loved? They loved their audiences. And they had an obligation to their audiences. And they would not give them anything they thought hurt their audiences. That's the difference between who runs studios today and who ran them then. Along come, and all movies were made by studios. There's even a thing called the bug, which when you see a movie projected on screen, there's a little thing that flashes and you won't even see it, but your projectionist knows where to look and he sees it. And if the bug, it's a little emblem, and what it means is that that came from a union that connected to the studios. So the, the movie is going to be acceptable for audiences everywhere. Without that little bug, the movie would not be shown. That's why independent pictures had nowhere to go except in art studios. In art theaters, you know, the kind that used to show a little different kind of movie. You ever made much money? Here comes Clockwork Orange, an independent picture. They made, that was the first time there had been frontal nudity on screen. The first time there had been open drugs on screen. Now we're in the 60s where Spearfinger is out there offering all these goodies to our youngsters and they're gravitating to this movie like crazy. The theaters were beginning to close left and right because television had just made a big impact and people were staying home watching TV. They weren't going out and paying their money to watch a movie. They saw this little art picture showing an art house. It's not an art picture, but showing an art house is making money. So they began to open up the theaters to independent pictures. Independent pictures knew that they had to be dirtier, meaner, and more enticing than anything on TV or nobody would come out for them. And so began the crumbling of our whole media generation, which has gotten worse and worse and worse. And now studios don't make movies anymore. Studios only lease space for independents to make movies. So there's nobody there who cares. There's no chickadee. There is no chickadee anymore. And those responsible, well, I'm responsible. I didn't do anything to stop Spearfinger because I too did not want to be thought old fashioned out of step for a bogey. Our children today, we see a kid, a three years old, having a tantrum and we say, out in public, and we say, I would never have done that when I was a kid. Well, you know what, that child didn't arrive on the planet like that, but he will do that until some chickadee cares enough to say, no, we have rules, and you will follow the rules because we love you so much, we want your life to mean something. So what I've decided is that while I couldn't find the relevance in this book for you, Shelly reminded me that chickadees must speak up again. Because these children who are out there killing children, the 11 year old girls who stabbed their friend 19 times in order to impress an internet figure that's totally fictitious, doesn't even exist, it's animated. And they stabbed their friend 19 times to get the approval of something that doesn't even exist. That's how distorted we have allowed our filmmakers to affect our children. That's how distorted our thinking has become. You take the little boy, uh, Columbine, the two little boys, they were bullied. They were bullied, they got back. 
Where was the chickadee that says, we care about you. We're not going to let that happen to you. Nobody did. Every time I see somebody, young person, killing others, it just reminds me that nobody put their arms around that child as a child and said, what's your problem? We love you. Nor did we give them a role model to follow because we don't have any rules anymore. Whatever feels good, you just go ahead and do it. We have got to find the chickadees again, and we have to be the chickadee again. That's what we do. Our children are so desensitized now by all of the terrible media. Turn on your television. You're going to have a hard time finding a show where you're putting it around out there where there's not depression, mayhem, darkness. And that's what we throw at them. We throw at them. And we've allowed the three-piece suits and all of the studios and the independent pictures and the record makers. We have allowed them to methodically desensitize our children. They have taken away their childhood. And we chickadees, we let it happen. We've got to find our strength again. We've got to sing our song again. That's the end of my talk. <laughs> oh, Esther.